the three suspected spies for Russia in the UK arrested and charged in a major national security investigation. The defendants, all Bulgarian nationals, were held in February and have been remanded in custody ever since. They're charged with possessing identity documents with improper intention and are alleged to have had these knowing that they were fake. Uh, it's alleged they were working for the Russian security services. These are, of course, suspects, innocent until proven guilty, and all that goes along with that, of course. But the wider issue of spies among us, Matthew Dunn is a former MI6 intelligence officer, intelligence officer, author of many spy books. The latest one, The Spy Thief, is out there now. Afternoon to you, Matthew. Good afternoon. I mean, it's the stuff of dramas and films and books for, forever, really, isn't it? You know, spies, they've been heroes, depending on where you sit. They've been the worst kind of people you ever want to meet. Some are assassins. Others are just trying to do some good work. You know, we hear all of this kind of stuff. Um, I mean, how do you define a spy for a start? Um, well, it, it really depends. In uh, uh, my uh, the organisation I work with, um, MI6, um, a spy was defined as somebody that uh, people like me used to recruit a foreign individual who had access to secrets. Um, my specific role was uh, more clearly defined as an intelligence officer. But that said, I think um, I'm quite relaxed about uh, calling anybody who works in that world a spy. So I'm, I'm not hung up on that. Got it. Um, everybody has spies, right? True enough. Um, there are certain countries um, that are particularly active in, in the secret world, the world of espionage, um, but most countries um, do spy on some guys. And after all, it is uh, an extremely old profession. Um, trying to obtain one's enemy's secrets uh, goes back throughout history. Yeah. Um, and, in, and, and spies work in different ways. You know, we know that in terms of the, and obviously we can't talk about the specifics of this case, that, that will be decided through courts of law and the like, but, you know, we know that the, that the Russian contingent of the spy world is prolific. We have seen even uh, murder and attempted murder. This goes beyond, you know, finding some databases. This is something much more sinister, and Russia is, I, I would imagine, uh, clearly... Uh, number one on the uh, on the watch list from the UK's perspective. Yeah, it's, it's not betraying any <laughs> secrets to um, echo what you've just said about Russia. Um, and um, it really has been business as usual. Um, to put it in context, I joined MI6 after the collapse of uh, the Soviet Union, the end of the Cold War. Um, and it wasn't just a case of business as usual. If anything, it was more frenetic, um, the amount of activity that was coming from the East. Um, and uh, that activity is taking place in obvious locations, Europe and particularly the UK, London, in my mind, being very much one of the key centres uh, of espionage, if not the epicentre to, to some extent. So very active. Do we spy on allies and vice versa? Um, no, we don't. There is... Um, there is a, a very, very strict rule applied to that um, because, of course, we're, we're, we are allies, but we are. There's a pragmatic element, which is we're cooperating together. We're working on joint yeah. operations. We're sharing intelligence. So to try to sort of spy on tittle tattle, which is what it would deem to be, yeah. um, would be completely counterproductive. Indeed, and with I think I'm thinking of the, the war in Ukraine as being an obvious uh, contemporary backdrop that might have accelerated things. I would imagine that whatever Russia might have been doing over here previously, uh, they would have attempted to up that somewhat in the wake of what's been happening there. Um, up it somewhat for sure, but uh, there, there's a backstory, and 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 that is Russia's. Um, imperial if you like aspirations and and so we're looking at it now in the context of the ukraine um but is a general um sense that russia is looking at empire building um and espionage the deployment of russia's spies very much is a crucial sharp end um aspect of that activity so this has been going on for quite some time um, and one assumes that not the last we will hear of this. I mean, this particular case will be decided, as we said, but um, it's, is it an ongoing sort of cat and mouse game? It's cat and mouse, but uh, and, and people like me do fall into the trap of calling it a game. Um, however, um, there are some severe consequences yeah. um, in terms of 
um, the activity of, of spies operating in hostile territories, which is would be the case if you're a Russian spy operating in the UK, for example. Um, sometimes it can be very benign. It can be simply an eyes and ears um, level of activity. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but other times, as we full well know, there can be very, very serious things such as assassination attempts or successful assassinations. Yeah. Um, Alexander Litvinenko being a case in point, True. or indeed the um, attack, attack on the script holes in Salisbury. Well, I was going to say, we, we think of Salisbury, you can go back, I mean, the 1970s, the umbrella incident on Waterloo yeah. Bridge, you know, yeah, those Yeah, Markov, et cetera. Yeah, indeed. exactly. So there are very, very dark, serious uh, consequences of uh, the activities. Matthew, thank you for your time, sir. Great to have you on. Matthew Dunn, former MI6 intelligence officer. In a different context, I would have asked him about James Bond, all right? I'm just putting that out there. I didn't forget. just wasn't quite the appropriate 